Yeah. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, thank you for attending, and thank you for the introduction. I hope I will meet the expectations. Um, so yes, I'm, I'm here to present uh, Bonobo, which is an ETL project in Python 3.5 and the next versions. Um, that is about six months old. It's, um, I worked on it uh, for much more time, but this, this version is a brand new rewrite from uh, the beginning of the year. So, real quick, I'm Romain Dorgueil. Uh, I have a French name and probably a French accent too. Um, I worked in a lot of different companies and different contexts, but uh, I've been around web development and software engineering for around the last 10 years. And I've seen a lot of ETLs, uh, market ETLs in different contexts, and I didn't find uh, what I really wanted. So it's the main reason why Bonobo exists today and why I, I put so much energy in that. Um, real quick also, I'm working currently as an advisor in the startup accelerators of uh, BNP Paribas. So we are a team of former entrepreneurs building uh, Yboost and FinTech and corporate um, accelerators uh, where we basically give uh, business and technical advice to, to funders. So back to the beginning. Um, my plan for this talk is uh, to take maybe something like 10 minutes to go into what exists in various languages, not only Python, because most of the ETLs I used are, were not Python. Uh, what exists also in Python and why I decided that it was not meeting my uh, needs. Um, then I will try to use the most of the time of the, of the talk to show you uh, uh, real cases and uh, real world usage. Well, not really real world, but uh, example usage and so, so you can understand a bit more and also dive you into the few things you have to know to, to start using it, and there is really not much. Uh, and then we have a, a conclusion when, uh, with some pointers of where you can go from that. So, ETLs. Uh, as many of you probably already know, it means Extract Transform Loan. Uh, accord according to Wikipedia, it was already popular in 1970, so definitely not something new. Uh, and it's basically everywhere where you have uh, more than one data store talking about one data. So if you have some master-slave data, if you have some stock system uh, connected to some um, e-commerce website, for example, uh, you will probably uh, use some kind of ETL to connect all that together. For those who don't know about that, uh, the most simple schema I could come up with uh, about ETLs is that uh, you have a stack of data. Here it's foo, bar, and buzz. You have a um, node-red list of transformation you want to apply on each line of data. And the extract here can uh, transform foo in some, into something else. When it finished transforming it, it goes into transform. And while transform is taking care of the result of extracting foo, uh, extract can uh, start handling bar and etc. So you, you can, as it's completely independent, you can um, handle each transformation line in parallel, uh, step by step. Uh, in, in the real world, it usually looks like that. Uh, there is databases, there is mails that sends, there is logging, maybe not mails, anything. Uh, but the gener general concept is exactly the same, uh, just it's not, uh, not as, as linear as it is here. There is a lot of tools I, I've seen in the market, mostly Java-based, uh, that looks like that. It's usually an IDE first, and probably you can uh, code it. In your, here it's Talent Open Studio. Uh, probably you can use code, but mostly it's a graphical uh, interface that uh, configures everything from uh, dialogues. It's very handy, but uh, you, when you're a programmer, you feel uh, very limited, very fast. Uh, there is Clover that I never used, but it looks exactly the same, just a bit different. Um, uh, this one is Pentao, open um, Pentao data integration, also called Kettle. Uh, I use this one a lot, but also same concept. So we have, in, in this world, we have mostly gray first, eventually code, but um, and mostly Java based. In the Python world, there is a few libraries. I'm, I'm not at all exhaustive here. Um, 
Uh, Bubbles, I think, is now marked unmaintained. Um, Petal is much more a fluid interface. There is a, um, a lot more. So some people in last conference told me about uh, METL, I think. There is a P Python ETL. But, but um, none of these, uh, according to my analysis, were, were um, doing the same thing as the Java tools, which is simply um, connecting independent boxes together using a data flow. And so I, I started to create Bonobo. Uh, in fact, I, I, I started to create another library, which, I, which was uh, Python 2.7, uh, but it was just badly written, so the best thing to do, according to me, was to start again and drop completely the Python 2 support. i explain more later. Uh, there is also related tools uh, that you must know, I guess. Uh, Joblib, Dask, Pandas tools. You may at least know some of them. Maybe Pandas. Uh, it's amazing tools, but um, ETL is not really their main focus. Um, for, for example, Pandas is really good to transform a data set into another data set, and I'm, I'm using maybe every day. But uh, when, I, when I want to do more engineering on data, like taking one item at a time and transforming in step A, step B, step C, step D, it's not really the topic at all. Uh, there is other scales of the tools to transform data. Uh, real quick, there is, you may know, uh, IFTTT or Zapier, which are cloud-based uh, so software as a service uh, tools to do small automations. Uh, obviously, this won't run on your laptop. And there is huge data tools, um, which like Spark, Hadoop, I just used a few here, but either you need a big infrastructure to start doing things, or at least a, a decent infrastructure. Either you're using a cloud-based thing and you have the same problem about uh, how do you work without the cloud and how, you don't, how, you, how you're not locking yourself into one vendor. Uh, as said in the description of the talk, it's not a, not, there is no big data in this room. Um, but yeah, uh, I want to tell you a bit of story about how I came to discover ETLs uh, while I was founding, uh, uh, co-founding a, a company. So uh, when we started, we had a few different uh, partners. We were doing a marketplace about uh, re retail. It, it was a clothes, uh, mostly for women. Um, and we needed to, to work with different partners to integrate the stocks and catalogs um, and colors and pictures and etc. on our marketplace, which was multi-brand. Multi so the first partner went very well. We just uh, coded it in uh, Kettle, uh, Pantao. And yeah, after a while, you know, well, we moved things everywhere. And after a while, it was working, so we were really happy. But just we, we got a few deals, and uh, when you got the best ID uh, to integrate the other partners is to like copy past the code, right, to the second and third partner, because it's about the same, uh, but just a bit different. Uh, of course, this is um, not a good engineering practice, but uh, you, when you're used to subclass things and to instantiate things with different parameters, and now you have an, a guy, you're just lost because you, you can't really do that. So you don't know how to not repeat yourself. And of course, the, the time comes where you, you need to fix a bug and you just go crazy. And maybe if it's not a bug, it's um, new features because you didn't support colors for now. And now you have different model of colors and you need to update everything. So really what I needed was something cheap I could install on my laptop, uh, use on servers too. And using code as configuration, and preferably Python code. This one is not for any good reason, except the fact that uh, I prefer code in Python than anything else. But mostly I need something that uses code as configuration to do ETL, just like Pentaho were doing ETL. And yeah, that's Bonobo. Uh, it's a framework to write ETL jobs in Python using code, and eventually someday some kind of gray may come to visualize things. But first, it's code, so you can write classes, you can subclass things, and uh, adapt things like you just coding web or maybe other engineering. Um, I'll go very fast on that, but uh, it's very different to all, all tools existing uh, in the PyData world uh, that I know. Uh, if maybe there is tools I don't know, so I'm 
very happy if you tell me about that. Uh, and uh, Hacker News told me that uh, I'm a bit stupid. Uh, monkey, uh, Bonobo is not a monkey, it's an ape. And French language uh, apparently don't make the difference, so I did not even know that that was two different words. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I will. S One second. I will try to show you first how to bootstrap a project, then uh, I'll post to show you all the different concepts uh, that I used without telling before, and then I will go back to the demo and examples to apply the concept I showed uh, to different demos. So the basics is pip install, and you have a generator using cookie cutter that is just Bonobo init something. Um, and you can run something with a Bonobo run. So, uh, how do I switch to a terminal? Not like this, obviously. Okay, so I already run the init, but because I'm, I'm sure you don't believe me, um, or maybe you believe me, but I will just show. Uh, you can bonobo init foo, for example, and it will just create a foo directory with a main.py file, and probably if I diff main.py with foo slash main.py, uh, yeah, there is a few difference, but mostly end of lines. So it's the same file. Uh, so I remove foo because uh, I have other file that will use. Uh, I will use after that, um, and just so that yeah, I can bonobo run uh, main.py for example. Uh, that's the default transformation that is bundled with the, the generator. Uh, nothing really fancy. Just generate numbers and takes only the odd numbers. And uh, I, can also, I can also run uh, on a directory because the main file uh, is considered the, the main. <laughs> and so I can, it's, uh, running dots will do exactly the same. Uh, okay, that's not really interesting, but that's really the basics. Um, so that was that. So now I want to show you uh, what was actually run. So I don't, uh, I, I won't show you the 1 to 42 or 0 to 41. But uh, I wrote a, a simple one here, which is basically the definition of three different functions, one yielding Euro, then Python, then 2017, one just uh, applying title to, the, to a string in inputs, and one just printing the thing. And one, once I define all that, I can create a graph instance. Uh, here it's a linear graph, uh, which is the default thing we can do. But there is also API method to add uh, other chains forking for some point in the graph. I will show it in, in an example. Um, and yeah, I just define a graph. And because there is a graph instance here, I can use Bonobo run on this file. And it will just add some plugins for the display and run that. So. Uh, here I should have the first.py file. Maybe it's a bit big, I don't know. Uh, I have the first.py file, which is not at all what I wanted to show. Um, okay, I need to check out example one. And I replace the code in, yes, this, it's this one. I replace the, the code in main.py, so it's exactly what I showed. And I can put up a run. Uh, main.py, I will see the outputs of the, the load which prints the thing, so Euro, Python, and 2017, which is titled. And I, sh I see some statistics. It's very fast here, so it's already gray, but you would see the statistics move uh, while, while it's running uh, on a longer transformation. Okay. Um, that was this one. Yeah, so second one, a bit more uh, complete. Uh, I, I I, I just made a europython.txt file. That's, I, I just extracted data on the Europython Society, uh, which is a company behind Europython. About all the conference uh, in Europython, it's like two or three lines each time that says, yeah, it was there, there was maybe a few attendees. Sometimes we don't have the information about the number of atten attendees. Sometimes we have the date. Or we have the date every time, but not really formatted the same, same way. Um, so I, I, I took this data and said, okay, I will extract um, all, the, all the paragraphs about each conference uh, and send it, like yielding it uh, to the next. The detail of this code is not really important. Um, then transform that using a few regex to find like the, the location, the number of attendees, if it's here, etc., and create a dictionary from that. And then 
Um, I, I made a, a, a little helper function called org0 to quarks that changed the formatting of fan input output, but no, not really important yet. Um, so here I create a graph the same way, and I'm using a built-in which is pretty printer, which is better than print to, to print. Um, and if I run that, yes, I need to run actually. Uh, I will see uh, the name, the new dates, attendees, attendees only if available. For example, it's not yet available for Europe Python 2017. Um, yeah, that's that. So there is a few changes I can make to this, uh, to, to this transformation to make it a bit more useful, but just before I want to ex explain what's happening under the hood. Uh, and maybe full screen is better. So what's happening here? We created a graph instance, and a graph is really a list of edges and nodes, nothing fancy. It's, uh, it can be represented graphically like this, but it's just two lists, in fact. Uh, and to prove that, I just removed all the code that, yes, is in use, but not really useful, and yes, the graph uh, definition is that. Um, on first call, you, you have a shortcut to call add chain, that uh, add the first chain you pass to the constructor of the graph, but then you can add chain anytime you want, and you can specify uh, different inputs, because you don't want every first node to be at the beginning of the graph, but maybe fork an existing chain. Then when, once, uh, once uh, you define a graph, you either run it using the bonobo.run method, uh, or you can run it using the CLI like we did before in the shell. Uh, and what happens is that it takes this graph we defined before. It, there is an executor strategy that uh, adds a few things. Uh, here it adds a, a global context, a context for each node, and a thread around each node. It creates FIFO queues that are thread safe queues, uh, Python built ins, um, that, not built ins, but um, a standard library, uh, that are used to buffer input and output between the different uh, nodes. And in fact, the, the, the context uh, here is only used to keep the transformation uh, contextless and stateless, uh, because if we need to, to keep, for example, statistics or maybe uh, instantiation of uh, something we need during the time of the execution, we don't want to modify the object you, you provided to, to the graph. So it looks like that, no, the, 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 global, uh, the global context, it creates a context for each node, just what I said before. Um, the strategy is relying on um, thread pool executor uh, of Python, uh, in the concurrent.futures, I think. Uh, and we just create a runner, which uh, is just something that will run every time it gets something in the, in the input queue. Uh, it will run the node and push the, the output to the next queues. And then it does nothing, and when it's finished, it shuts down. That's implementation details. You don't definitely don't need to know that to use Bonobo, but uh, it's just to show that it's not that complex what happens under, under the hood. What you can use as transformations in Bonobo uh, is various things. So you can use functions like we did before. Uh, most, mostly if you have uh, for each line of input, one line of output. Uh, you can use generators if you have for each uh, line of input, zero, one, or more um, output lines. Uh, for example, it's very useful for, to implement joins, a Cartesian products, or even to, to make something that either yield or not. Uh, you can use iterators, uh, which are not really callable, but uh, it's handy to say, okay, I, ca I can have transformation that have no input, like it's why it's called extract here, that it, it has no input and yields a bunch of outputs. And of course, you can use everything that is callable in Python. Uh, I'm just trying to call it. If it's callable, then yeah, it's probably a duck. Um, and so that's the the the. the the, the handmade way to do that. Uh, you can do the underscore underscore called under uh, and it will work, but there is a, um, a handier way to do that. Uh, I have a bonobo.config.configurable class that allows to use a few descriptors to specify what kind of options and dependencies you will have in your transformation. 
Uh, of course, for simple transformation, you won't use that. But if you, yes, if you need to configure the, the transformation, it's probably easier to, to use that. So uh, here, so we define an option called table name that we will use to query a database. Uh, it has a default, but you can override it. We'll see after. Um, we define a service that we call database, which defaults to database.default. It's a symbolic name that will point to something. We'll also see later. Um, yes, at, at uh, um, whatever you want to instantiate this query database class, you can or not override the different uh, values, and there can be validation, but that's the detail. Um, much more interesting, there is services, and services like the, the, the database service we provided here is basically, basically saying, okay, my transformation will rely on a database, but I don't want yet to tell you what implementation I will use, and I just say it's probably called database.default. So at one time, provide me something called database.default, and I'll try to use it like I thought it would work. Uh, and at one time, you can provide a, a via a get services uh, function, uh, a, a simple dictionary that provides the implementations, allowing, for example, to provide a different dictionary for tests, and so you will be able to provide a my database uh, test implementation or mock implementation uh, instead of this one to test the transformation without testing the external dependencies and PostgreSQL and etc. etc. Uh, there is bananas with Bonobo. Uh, not a lot for now. Uh, it's kind of a standard library. It allows to read files, write files. We will use that just after. Nothing fancy here. There is a few tools to uh, work with the life cycle or to, to debug things. We used Pretty Printer before. And there is a few extensions and plugins, or plugins and extensions in the order of the presentation. Um, oh, this projector is really good quality because we can see the thing. It was not the case last time. Um, the console plugin will uh, show in real time the input and the output uh, of each transformation. Uh, I'm apparently not able to draw an, a tree, a NASCAR art tree uh, in the console, but to show the graph like a Git, a Git log would do. But uh, if some of you know how to do that, I would be really interested because it's, it, it would be the same feature, but it would be nicer. Uh, and of course, I, I'm using Python login to, to, to do that. There is a Jupyter plugin. I, yeah, I should have the time to, to show you that uh, after. Uh, and everything that relies on bigger libraries or big dependencies um, are bundled eventually as extensions. Uh, there is, for example, the SQL Alchemy extension I'm, trying, I'm starting to use, uh, which allows to work with SQL databases. There is a Docker extension uh, that adds a run C command to the Bonobo CLI that does the exact same, th tries to do the exact same thing as Bonobo run, but within a container. Um, yes. There is a different repository called Bonobo Dev Kit that allows to work on different forks at the same time of, uh, of the project, probably more something for me or for anything that we want to contribute, but uh, it's useful too. And yes, we have time for more examples, so I will show you a lot of things. So, first, water. So, I'll start again from the demo uh, I did before, and we'll try to show you how to use a service instead of directly opening a file, uh, how to write the result to a CSV, and how to write to JSON. So, uh, what do, did we have? Uh, it was this one. Okay, so we were reading the europython.txt, transform, etc. So, um, what I want is instead of opening this file uh, using something that I will be able to switch from local file system to S3, etc., and there is a, a, a very good library uh, we are relying on on Bonobo, which is called File System 2, that does exactly that. And uh, we, so, uh, yes, so we're just depending on that and, and it will be installed. So I can uh, do something that is at requires of um, FS, for example. Uh, I will import uh, requires. Yeah, no, so that's, that's Python. Okay. And 
So uh, it will be provided as a parameter uh, by the decorator just above. And I can use fs like this, using fs.open instead of uh, just opening the file. Um, so I did an fs service. Maybe it's already defined, but uh, by default, it's the only one that I defined by default. But uh, but in fact, all this thing is not really useful. So we'll just say, okay, fs is bonobo.openfs, which by default will use the current directory as the root of the file system object. So the um, bonobo run first dot py should do the exact same thing it did before but we are not running anymore on directly opening the file next step was writing to a csv so that's a good occasion for me to show you how we fork the graph and not make something just linear so i will use the add chain method um, to add a bonobo.csv writer uh, to a file name, which will use also the file system service, uh, which is what, uh, the same file system service. So I will write to europython.csv. And to explain that I don't want it to be a new chain that just um, take an empty imp impulsion at the, at the beginning of the transformation, I need to say, okay, the input of this chain like the, the node before uh, the first node of this chain is arg to quarks. Um, about arg zero to quarks, uh, in fact, the, 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 the previous uh, transformation, so transform function, was returning uh, uh, one argument containing a dictionary, and it just transformed this first argument, which is a dictionary, into keyword arguments. And by default, it can be overwritten, but by default, all writers are taking keyword arguments as inputs. So it's also why it's here. And it works better with ProjectPrinter too. So that should work. Uh, it's here that I would really like the ASCII art tree. But there is a CSV, CSV writer that ran at the same level of Pretty Printer. It didn't, it didn't take the output of Pretty Printer because Pretty Printer didn't have any output. It took the output of arc zero to quarks, and this output, which is here, came to Pretty Printer and to CSV writer at the same time. Uh, because I don't know if I removed the file before the, the presentation, I will remove it and run it again. So you're sure I'm not lying. Uh, and if I open that, it should contain all the data but formatted as CSV with maybe the a number of attendees, uh, like for last year, or maybe not if we don't know from the European Society side. Okay. Um, now we'll do. Uh, so the, the next uh, task I had was to write to JSON, uh, which will be really easy because the syntax is exactly the same. Uh, if I wanted to change a bit the formatting, there is advanced options that are not the same for CSV and JSON, obviously, but uh, if I just want to write to a file, it's easy uh, if I can use my keyboard. Okay, uh, so yeah, it's exactly the same, but europython.json. So I don't have any europython.json file here. Uh, I run the thing and now I should have the file containing the same thing but formatted as JSON. Okay. So that's very basic. Uh, so I, I try to find other examples to show. I looked up yesterday, I think, uh, for Rimini open data and yeah, Rimini has open data, in fact. So. I don't speak very good Italian, so I understand absolutely nothing about what it was about. But I understand JSON, so I could extract things and just play a bit. Uh, I think I need to git check out something, which is example three. And he's not really happy, so I will force the checkouts. Yeah, okay. Don't look at my commit messages. Um, so I have a remini.py, um, which just 
it, it's a bit similar as, at, uh, as what we did before, but here we require the service that we call HTTP. Uh, if I open the services.py file, I will see that uh, I just defined that HTTP is a request. Um, I could have used anything else, but that means that probably I will rely on anything that works like requests. Um, so I use this HTTP to HTTP get a new URL while I have um, what I have a next URL because each uh, batch of 100 uh, results will, if there is a next page, say, okay, next URL is that because the web service is not very good. I need to substitute slash node by slash node.json because it returns to HTML and I iterate until there is no next URL. Then I still act to Krog and just write a JSON file about that. So it will be a bit uh, longer because uh, I need to, obviously I can't do it parallel because I need to have the result of the first request to know the next URL before I can do anything. So I should have run it before I started to say that. Um, but yeah, one, 100 by 100, there will be an extraction from HTTP. Uh, then the arc zero to Krog is maybe instant, and JSON writer is maybe in, is barely instant too. Uh, it's, it's a bit different uh, to use JSON writer than to just JSON encode the whole thing, because uh, I will just encode each line independently uh, to avoid to, having to, to have to buffer everything. So really what it needs is only one line at a time, and it will uh, write really a few, few bytes every time in the, in the file. So um, maybe I, I guess it's about the elections in Rimini. There is, uh, well, we don't, see, we this side, we don't see a lot, but we just aggregated all pages from this, well, this uh, REST API, not REST, just uh, API. Uh, there is things I don't understand. There is users, maybe the person that created the item on the, on the website, I don't know. And there is the uh, different districts, so I guess that's related to where you have to go vote when there is an election, but that's really a wild guess. Uh, okay, that's Rimini, but uh, for something that we all understand, and which is English, um, I will show how to extract all the public uh, Europython attendees in a, in a notebook. Of course, uh, you, you can say it's doable with uh, other ways, but it's, it's just for the example. So I will write uh, a Jupyter notebook. I guess everybody knows about Jupyter notebook here. Uh, and yeah, so here I have an attendees.json, which should not exist. Um, and I have this, so I will like restart and clear output, just to be sure mostly to clear output, in fact. So I'm using Selenium here, um, which is basically something to control a browser, if you don't know about it. It's not, it's not new, it's a very old li library. And I have a few wrappers, but uh, really it doesn't contain much code. So uh, I say, okay, there is a who's coming page on the Europython website. Uh, I need to implement a, a browser service, which is using bonobo selenium .create browser. You could just create a Selenium browser directly, and I open a file system. Um, okay, so I'm a bit short on time, so I will just execute the graph, uh, execute the graph building step. Uh, I have a graph, great, and then I will just use bonobo.run, and so there should be a yeah, Firefox uh, opening with the who's coming that will scroll down every time the, the, the infinite scroll is not done it will get as long as it gets elements and when it can't get elements anymore it will try to like uh, bounce top bottom once just to see if it's not some JavaScript that doesn't work and or some lags and if really we didn't get any new data uh, it will exit after a few seconds uh, I think there is something like 350 uh, public uh, attendees uh, announced on the on the website. Of course, a lot of uh, have made it private, and they're right because there is people like me which crawl the thing. Uh, but I won't do anything with the data. It's just an example for here. Uh, and yeah, so probably here it's it was bouncing. Probably Lucas is the last one. Maybe it already bounced. And 
yeah, the, the plus sign here just change to minus. Uh, to say that this transformation has finished, the other one is instant, so we should have a JSON with all the attendees now. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we know if it's a speaker, we know it's tagline if you put one. Here there is no tagline, here there is tagline, etc. etc. Uh, so with the very few minutes left, I will skip the Siren example and go to the end. So yes, uh, Bonobo is a very young library. Uh, six months old is not a lot, definitely. I'm trying uh, to work as hard as I can, but uh, I'm not superhuman, so uh, it's not enough, of course. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited by this because it's something I'm using um, every time for everything, in fact. Uh, and I, I'd really like to get to 1.0 either at the end of the year or early next year. And 1.0 mostly means for me a stable API you can rely on that is fully documented and fully tested, etc. It's already fully tested and a bit documented, but I need much more. Um, Python 3.5 is uh, a personal guerrilla. I started this year. Uh, I don't want Python 2 anymore, so I'm trying to push the most I can to only use Python 3.5. And there is some really handy syntax to work with data. The, I don't know what it's called, but the start star operator within a dictionary to expand a dictionary instead of updating things in place using the dot update on dictionary is really, really awesome. Uh, we, still has a, uh, we still have a, a global interpreter lock, of course. But uh, maybe we will overcome this limitation of running on only one core using different strategies. For now, it's the threading strategy by default, so we have the deal. Maybe not a problem if you're I.O. bound, but if you're CPU bound, it, it can be a problem. Um, but yeah, probably process pool strategies, maybe a dask distributed strategy, everything like this, we can um, try to limit a bit what the, the deal is um, bring us, bring in, bringing us as trouble. Uh, so 1.0 will stay, of course, 100% open source. It's Apache license. Uh, I want a very light library. Uh, of course, it should do the basic things like CSV, etc. And most file formats and tools should be included. But all things uh, containing dependencies and complex things should either be implemented by the user or go to extensions. Uh, it's small scale. The goal is one minute to install, easy to deploy. Uh, it's not. Once again, not big data, not statistics, not analytics. Um, if you want to do blockchain with that, you probably uh, you're not in the good conference. Um, and it's basically lean manufacturing for data. It's like I'm, I have a, a production chain uh, where I use all little packets of data, and one at a time, I'm adding something, uh, checking something, modifying something, etc. Uh, I'll skip on that, but uh, the, the internet is completely crazy. Like, uh, I can use is more concerned about me knowing about actual um, uh, ontology of, no, not ontology, um, taxonomy of, uh, of monkeys and apes and primates. So uh, I, I really like the last one that says Python not only at, has duct typing, it has the little known primate typing feature. And yeah, this one saved my life. Not really, but it, it was really funny. Uh, I'd really like to, uh, it to become data processing for humans. Of course, there is a uh, lot more to do. You can read more on the website, uh, bonobo-project.org. You can read more in the documentation. Uh, you will find a link in the website. There is a Slack channel. You can discuss, come. Uh, it's really open. Uh, and there is a GitHub. You will also find the link uh, on, on the website. And um, yeah, one more thing because I finish, uh, I will try to organize a sprint, whether you want to come or not, it's not a problem, but you should really consider to go to whatever sprint, it's really amazing at RiverPython to, to just code on a project by guys. Uh, last year I, I did PyTest, which was a really great way to, to learn, so come, of course, code on Bonobo, but if you don't come to other sprints, it's really, really, really great thing. And um, just before uh, we take a few minutes for questions, if uh, just before that, it would be really great if you could give me a really fast few lines feedback uh, as you think it's, I, I, I really need raw feedback uh, on this URL. I have a little form and yeah, that, that would be really, really, really great for me. Thank you very much and if we still have a bit of time, yeah, uh, yeah. let's yeah. try to answer questions if you have some. Thank you very much. So big applause, very interesting.
and I think there are many questions, at least I have many questions, but I would give you one here. Okay. There. It's always good to, to, to ask questions in the back of the room because it's good for the health of the organizer. Hello, um, thank you very much for your great talk and working on this project. Um, there's one question that, that caught my eye. Um, when I work with ETL, something can go wrong, especially with uh, URLs on the web and stuff. How would I, in this framework, deal with that? Okay, so um, the question is about error handling. Um, for now, what's, what's happening in the, in the framework is that uh, each on each line, it's calling uh, uh, one. Uh, it's calling the, the function or the node one time. So there is two possibilities. There is errors that can't um, that I call unrecoverable. It's not really easy to I should find shorter word. So there is unrecoverable errors that will just stop the graph and yield uh, and raise the exception. Uh, so I can't just run the graph. So you developer, you should fix that. Uh, Instead, there is also recoverable errors, which are errors that happen only on one line of data uh, or a few lines of data. So uh, f there is a default error handler that you could uh, override uh, that will just use the console to, to show the unrecoverable errors and just skip to the next line of data. But if you want to handle it differently, you could uh, override this handle error uh, thing and just uh, do whatever you want. Probably there will be things like Sentry plugins or things like this, but for now it's really not a priority and it should be just a few lines to implement that. Another question? Okay, then maybe I have a question. Do you know the Kafka streams? It somehow reminds me just that the Kafka streams are meant for being distributed on a cluster, running big data on the Kafka mm -hmm. queue, but you also have queues distributing the task to threads, I think. So more or less, it, it looks like the same architecture, isn't it? Yeah, um, so I, I'm not at all familiar with Kafka, uh, but here we are talking of, of uh, queue instances that are uh, q.q uh, Python queues within one process. I guess that Kafka queues are made, but maybe I'm, I'm wrong So because I don't know. I guess it's some kind of message bus that will uh, be able to pass messages from one server to another uh, because it's kind of an architecture thought for big data first. Here, what I really want to solve is the problem that, hey, I need to transform data right now, let's install it and, and, and code something. So it's in, uh, intra-process queues. Probably it's a bit similar because, yeah, you have first in, first out messages, so at one point you need a queue, but uh, uh, it's, it's thought for different uh, scale of architecture first. Of course, tomorrow, if I uh, can do the same with desk.distributed, for example, uh, there will be same kind of queues, but not the same uh, exact type of object that will be able to pass messages from one server to another. But then you have to think of um, uh, funny problems, like how do you optimize the topology of your graph uh, to like group the nearby transformation on only one server, and maybe they cost not the same, so how do you balance the number of transformation on each server? It's not not really easy, and uh, I'm pretty sure that if you have data of this scale, there is, uh, you can definitely afford to install a big data infrastructure and use either Kafka or Hadoop or um, uh, Py, PySpark, for example, or things like this. Thank you. Another question? No one? Okay, so everyone is hungry. Uh, so, and big thanks again. Yeah. Oh,